Hi, I'm Jim, and welcome to my set review blunders. Today, get rear out your shot and Freud uh, ready to go because, uh, as a, a bonus for our downloads for Dark Nemesis, uh, the goal for, oh, was it 300, I think? 200. 200 was uh, most embarrassing best in shows from set reviews. So today, I'll be doing my top eight most embarrassing best in shows from my set reviews, uh, where I go over. The, uh, I go over my biggest mistakes in set reviews, of course. Not super easy, not super easy. And uh, again, still downloading Dark Nemesis. We have until tomorrow at midnight. That is Tuesday at midnight to download. And uh, we're only at 314. So we have a lot more goals to do. Uh, paper, paper, paper date night's already set up. But Spelt Able, Car and IRL, there are more goals to hit. Please download the game. Make it to level 10. Use the QR code or my download link. Once you're at level 10, you're good to go. And you count as a download, all right? So uh, let's please do that for me and help me out because I want to... I want to get more goals for y'all. Get more goals for y'all. So, today we're going over my biggest top eight set review blunders. Uh, of course, set reviews are challenging. I do all my set reviews the second the full card list is out. So, no one's played a game yet. Um, no one's had an opinion yet. It really is just me and my first impressions on cards. And I think I'm right a pretty good amount of the time. Uh, I nailed expressive iteration. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of good hits. I have a lot of goods. But... You're always going to have misses too, all right? If you're going to even take a shot, you're always going to miss the net sometimes. So we're going to start off with our very first miss here uh, in Basri Ket. Uh, Basri Ket, the White Planeswalker from Core Set 2021. And uh, Basri looked pretty good as a way to kind of, you know, add to the board in your aggro deck against a control deck or a mid-range deck and play around sweepers and stuff like that. Uh, just ended up being really ineffective. Uh, for three mana, it wasn't really worth the value. This card cost two. I think his card should have been pretty good, but for three mana, adding one power to the board every turn just wasn't good enough. You know, to compare this card to the Wandering Emperor, and it's, it's pretty obvious how poor this card is. Now, it is important to note, though, when we're going over our best-in-show blunders, a lot of it is contextual. A lot of it is all about how does the blunder relate to the rest of the cards in the set. If if the next best card in white and core 2021 was only like a little bit better than this, it's not really a big, big, big blunder, right? And this one wasn't that bad. This one wasn't that bad. Um, you know... Bosch's Lieutenant saw a bit of play. Uh, best cards here in white in this set were, uh, were uh, all the way down here. Season Hollow Blade and Selfless Savior, which were, which were good cards. They saw a lot of play for sure. Either one could have easily been a pick over, uh, over the Planeswalker for, for best in show for white. Uh, so not the most egregious of blunders, but of course uh, a blunder nonetheless uh, here. Bosri Cat, number, number eight on our list here. Coming down to number seven, Dark Nemesis, thanks so much. Number seven on our list Symmetry Sage. Um, this one is one where it's a combination of the card actually being really awful um, and there being a pretty good replacement in uh, in Strixhaven. So Symmetry Sage, I, I do, I'm just kind of a sucker for these like prowessy cards. Uh, I really, really just like like prowessy, magecrafty, you know, cards. I also tend to like, is it spellsy cards? Uh, often to my detriment, uh, because unfortunately, Symmetry Stage is pretty bad. Uh, it's pretty bad overall. And we can look on over at Strixhaven and we can compare it to the cards in the set that are in blue and see what I missed. And we can pop on over here. And uh, there weren't really a ton of good blue cards in the set, you know. Uh, but Divide by Zero, of course, is the big one. So there was a, a much, much better uncommon. Uh, I definitely overlooked Div Divide by Zero on my set review. Uh, didn't look very good to me, but ended up being obviously a very, very powerful card. Got banned, probably due to the, due to the cards around it, uh, but definitely uh, definitely a miss on on that one. Symmetry Sage, number two, I'm sorry, number seven on our list here of our top eight blunders. Next blunder, Evan Death Draco Lich. And this one's, uh, when I saw this card, I was like, wow, that is a lot of power with flash and recursive elements. Pretty cool control card. And uh, I, I'm actually, it's funny, I, I look back at this card now, and I think to myself, wow, really, this card, like, never saw any play at all? Uh, it's really not that bad of a card. I recall playing it in a Chaos Draft or in a Cube Draft or something, uh, and being like, oh, wow, um, this card's actually kind of good, but has never found a home, kind of card that really needs a specific archetype or shell to be good, uh, and that just didn't really exist. That just didn't really exist. Uh, and again, all about value over replacement here. And there was a much better black card, 
a much better Black Mythic in the D&D set. D&D set underpowered overall, but Lao Spider Queen, I mean, come on. Lao Spider Queen was freaking awesome. Uh, just a, one of the best cards in Standard. Super awesome Planeswalker. Great design. Super fun. Uh, and uh, realistically, just an awesome card. And it was a miss. I missed. What can I say? What can I say? Next up on our list here, C Dasher Octopus. Uh, C Dasher Octopus. I, I was not the only one. I can take solace in the fact that uh, a lot of people saw C Dasher Octopus and were very, very excited for it. Uh, but the reality is that you can't really afford to remove stuff from the board in standard these days. All the cards are really, really good. You know, so Ninja V Powers are the same problem where you bounce a creature to your hand, now you've lost something of value. And even if you just draw one card, the body's too small to make an impact. Uh, this is the kind of card I think would have been really, really, really good about, you know, 15 or so years ago. Sorry, I'm just like doing the thing. Uh, 15 or so years ago, 10 years ago, when creatures were not nearly as good. Uh, but with creatures and threats just so good these days, uh, a 2-2 two -two isn't big enough, one card's not good enough. And the downside of like putting it on your creature and getting it killed was, was huge. It was huge. So... Definitely a miss. I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only one. Not my worst Ikoria miss. We'll get there as we, uh, we keep going on here. But um, And uh, competition-wise, we look over at the set. And uh, there weren't that many good blue cards in Ikoria, but the one I really missed was, was, was Shark Typhoon. Uh, Shark Typhoon ended up exceeding all my expectations. Uh, I saw Decree of Justice was a lot better than that. Uh, and you know, ends up being a pretty powerful card in multiple formats. Not an overtly powerful card, Shark Typhoon, but a very, very solid card indeed. And uh, a, a big miss. A big miss on my part. And uh, yeah, Sea Dasher Octopus. We hardly you, we knew you. We hardly knew you. So next up on our list, uh, I believe this is number, uh, is number number five? Number four. Number four on our list uh, for counting up to the number one card that I screwed up the most. Sun Gold Sentinel. And uh, this felt like, you know, a pick where the color didn't seem too good. And this card just looked very reasonable to me. Uh, just a very reasonable card. Good body, good value, graveyard hate, a little bit of protection. Uh, the problem was, I don't think Sun Gold Sentinel is bad. It did see some play for sure in standard. Uh, but this is an issue of value over replacement where there were actually a number of, uh, of better cards in this set. Uh, in white and uh, in uh, and this what says this, this is a midnight hunt in midnight hunt in white we had not faithful absence Adeline uh, unbelievably good card seeing play in historic even seeing playing play in modern uh, Adeline very very good card and then brutal Cathar I really undervalued brutal Cathar uh, brutal Cathar you know. Ended up being a, a lot more than I thought it would. I, I didn't think that the flipping back and forth thing was like really a thing. But in a lot of the mid rangey matchups, you know, in standard where they're more like kind of rampy decks, there aren't a lot of removal spells. And uh, I missed on it. I'm happy to say I missed on it. It might have been my, my, my trap card in the set. So uh, definitely an issue of the cards around it just being better than it. So Sun Gold Sentinel, definitely a miss. But we come to our top three here. All right. So our. Our number three worst miss is Slither Wisp. Uh, now, this was very close to number one. I had to go back and double check the videotape, though, and I'll explain why in a second. So, I still stand true to this point that Slither Wisp is an extremely powerful magic card. The problem is there just aren't enough good flash cards to make this card good. Uh, it is very powerful. It's a flash threat that can draw cards, uh, which is awesome. But the amount of playable flash. If this thing said whenever you play an instant, it would be one of the best, you know, control finishers of all of all time or whatever. It would be insane. Uh, but the problem is that the quality and quantity of flash cards, just, they just aren't there. There just aren't really enough of them. And then uh, the one deck that actually played enough flash cards to make it worthwhile was the Rogues deck. And then Rogues had to play Luris, obviously. And there already were enough good Rogues, and this also wasn't a Rogue. Um... The casting cost, a little bit of an issue as well. Uh, if it was, you know, uh, blue-black one, it'd be a little easier to do. Uh, but unfortunately, a card that just, again, with the right tools, I think this card was a format-defining card. Uh, but the tools weren't really there. Now, originally, this is going to be my number one biggest blunder. Uh, but I'm back to check the videotape, 
And I thought that I had chosen Slither Wisp over Luris of a Dream Den. Literally one of the best cards ever printed. Uh, but I didn't actually. I actually had a separate section uh, for the hybrid cards and the companions in that set review. So that is a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a light, I guess, at the end of a tunnel here. Um, but there were still plenty of other gold cards in the set that are much better than this. Uh, of course, Immersion Ultimatum, Genesis Ultimatum were big ones. You can scroll down looking through Ikoria, and I am sure there's plenty more here. Uh, Winona, yeah, yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of better gold cards than poor uh, than poor Slither Wisp or Sprite Dragon as well. So kind of a miss. Thankfully, not as much as a miss I thought it was because again, I had the companions on a separate section. They were in like a separate hybrid companion section. So. Thank God for that, right? I didn't call Slitherwitz over Loris uh, like I thought I did. So it wasn't that bad. That's why it only falls in at number three here on our biggest set review blunders. Number two. Now, number two, I, I'm I'm going to call a bit of a, a, a plea for mercy on this one. All right. So for those who watch my set reviews, I've always had best in show where I choose the best card in the set. But lately in my last few set reviews, I've, been added, I've added two new features. I've added uh, the sleeper card. And I've added the trap card, okay? This was before the sleeper card. And before the sleeper card was a, a category to win, I would sometimes use my best in show to try and highlight a card that I thought was being really, really overlooked. So in hindsight, if I had had a sleeper pick to use for Modern Horizons 2, this would have been the sleeper pick, and then probably Ragavan would have been the best in show pick. But Ragavan was so obvious to me at the time uh, that I wanted to highlight a different card that was less obvious, and I decided to use my best in show to do it. Obviously, uh, Ragavan, Dragon Rage Chandler, Unholy Heat, Fury, there are a bunch of really, really, really stupid red cards in Modern Horizons 2 that uh, could all be chosen over Glimpse. Glimpse ended up being, ends up being a, a fringe card, but a card that I think people completely overlooked and ended up being a player in the format, even if it's a little more of a meme player, um, you know, it definitely says, you know, sees play, yeah, Ragavan, Fury, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Charmo is a glimpse, yeah, and you go down here, and even the Uncommons and Commons, you know, just unbelievable cards in this, in this set, yeah, Dragon Rage Chandelier, Hunt of Holy Heat, so, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a bit of, of a miss on Glimpse, but I don't think I missed that hard, because it is a card that has ended up seeing play that was not being talked about at all, at all, so, uh, so I will say, I'll ask, I'll plead mercy on this one. I'll plead mercy on this one. But we come down to the worst. The worst of the worst. My biggest set review blunder ever uh, so, so far. <laughs> what do we have? It's going to be... Zagreus Thief of Heartbeats. Yeah, party. There's no party here. There's no party here. And I, this is similar to Slither Wisp where I think that one of the important things to realize with these set reviews is these set reviews are done in a vacuum. I'm, I'm, I'm operating under no experience of the cards at all because the, the cards are just there. And the set wasn't out yet. We haven't played with the cards yet. And the part of the mechanic looked like it was there, you know, for sure. It was definitely a major theme in the set. Uh, little could I know that base camp came in tapped and uh, there uh, wouldn't really be a party deck. And... This card is really good because if party is a deck and this thing costs like, you know, three mana or two mana, this card's insane. Uh, this card's insane. Uh, but no deck for this card at all. It's very similar to Slither Wisp. And without a deck, completely unplayable, obviously. And most of the uh, the party things that were happening were Bant and Green White for sure. So uh, the Rakdos party stuff were... Uh, there wasn't really any party stuff anyway, and if there was, it was definitely not Rakdos. So unfortunately, a big miss. And what was the uh, what was the card I missed? Uh, I missed over because again, it's all about the uh, comparison. Scroll down to the uh, the multicolored cards here, and uh, oh yeah, Omnath. Oh oh yeah. Um, now his failure is complete. Yeah yeah. So uh, unfortunately, Omnath, of course, banned in standard. Playable and modern, uh, just a really, really stupid magic card. And that was a pretty big miss. That was a pretty big miss. I didn't think Omnath was going to be that playable. I thought the mana cost was too restrictive. And uh, it's also a very, very strange card. Like, it just, there's just a lot going on in the text box. Uh, and of course, Fetchlands changed the uh, the math as well. Uh, so, 
That is my worst best in show pick to date. Will, will I top it? I don't know. We'll see. But thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed me going on my blunders. It's important to be able to look back on your mistakes, all right? I've had tons of great picks in my set reviews, but I've done, I mean, I've done what? Like almost a dozen set reviews at this point, and you're, you're going to miss sometimes. You're going to miss sometimes. So, YouTube folks, I love you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out my next set review for uh, the new set. Treats a new companion coming out soon, and uh, hopefully no more big blunders, all right? Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate it.